Samma Sambudu Saranai. May all beings be well and happy. A very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Dhamma and You brought to you by Channel I. And today as well we have uh, most venerable Reverend uh, Kema together with us uh, who has come from the United States uh, and who is here to gift us with another wonderful gift in Buddhism. Good evening to you. Good evening to you Budim and thank you for having me there. All right, so talking about the practice of Buddhism, uh, Reverend Kema, uh, we have been discussing it all over in our discussions, uh, especially when we speak of the practice, th which is what is very important, and talking about the lifestyles that we carry on, which is a very busy life schedule indeed. But how do you actually look into the aspect where a person can be advised, how a person can inculcate these values of Buddhism in to our day-to-day -day activities. Well, I think we talked one time, you and I, about the idea of change. Mm -hmm. And first we have to believe we can change. And then when we embrace Buddhism, we look at how we can use uh, the precepts and how we can understand the, uh, the, um, the hindrances and how they can affect us in life. And, um, you know, I won't go into the precepts, but we know in, we keep the five precepts in our daily life. We most of us, if we are Buddhist, understand the five precepts. And then we have five hindrances also, and these hindrances can disturb us. And in order to keep them uh, from disturbing us, the only way to do that is to understand how uh, these hindrances actually work. And these hindrances are interesting because they have various words come up in the text, not just the hindrance, but we, we hear the translations come as the hindrance, the distraction, uh, the disturbance, mm -hmm. uh, the obstacle which can become a, an obstruction if what, if what happens. And so we have to say, well, what can happen? Well, if the obstacle comes up for you in life and you grab a hold of it and hold on to it and become personally interested in it or angry at the truth of the moment, then you will suffer. You will Very suffer. True. So the question is, what do we do? And we've talked before about the little practice that we found in the text which was uh, kind of lost in translation. It's not that it was gone forever. It was kind of lost in translation because in the English translations from the Pali, uh, when we come out and uh, we talk about right effort, samawayama, that can get lost very easily. And it's true. That is know? very true. Actually, when we talk of the practice, I think the effort that needs to be put in to identify if we're doing something wrong, to identify that we are doing something wrong and to get away from it, it's not, it's not very easy. Right. That so right, requires so effort. right effort was very poignant in the Buddhist teaching. Right effort and right striving involved you taking the responsibility to recognize when you had an unwholesome mind state, to release the unwholesome mind state, to bring up a wholesome mind state, and to keep it going. So right there you see how he was talking about a system which was uh, a cycle of change, constant purification, constant um, constant purification and retraining mm -hmm. the mind in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have to realize is we can change. We have to believe it's possible. The second thing, did he give us, did, did Buddha Gautama give us a method for this change? He did in right effort, was a daily model for all the time mm -hmm. for uh, changing anything that was bothering us. To recognize the unwholesome taking us away from the wholesome which is whatever we're doing in our life at that moment, okay? And, um, and then pulling us away, and so we recognize that, then we release our personal attention on it, we relax, and we smile and come back and keep going with what we're doing. Now, when we do this, it's, it has a marvelous effect on some people, and before I go any further into what we're talking about, I wanna take 
maybe two minutes here and just tell you a quick story. But I've been teaching a particular group of people since I've been here in Sri Lanka. I may right. have mentioned that to you, didn't I? Well, <laughs> yes, you were talking about the taxi drivers, is That's it? Right. That's right. And I had the experience of getting into a cab one time in Colombo where uh, the driver was very, very upset. And he, I, I got in the cab and I was just going to be very quiet in the cab all the way back to Panadura where I'm staying at a temple, uh, in connection with a temple there. Right. And, um, you know, I knew I had about 25 minutes, 30 minutes to do this. And I thought, oh, well, what's going on? Why are you so upset, I said. And the taxi driver basically said to me, oh, this man, he got in my car and he told me how to drive and how to put the foot on the gas and the brake and how to do this and how to do that and where to turn and how fast to go. I didn't like that at all. And I said, whoa, oh. And he said, oh, he was terrible. He went on and he told me how bad it was. And I said, oh. And I saw the little Buddha sitting on the, on the dashboard, dashboard. And I said mm -hmm. to him, so are you Buddhist? And he said, well, yes, I am. And I said, well, do you remember what the, you, you know about Anicca? And uh, he said, yeah, well, I heard it in Sunday school. I said, well, do you remember what it means? And he said, well, uh, what it means, it means, I, I don't know. I said, everything's impermanent. It means right. everything changes. That's it, he said, that's what it means. I said, uh, so I don't know what your problem is, then why are you upset? Oh, this man got in the car and he started telling me the whole story again. And, uh, and then I said to him, well, did the, I have one question for you. And he said, okay, what? And I said, did the man get out of the car? Well, of course he got out of the car. Of course he did. He, he's fair, and he got out. He got in, he got out. I said, well, doesn't everybody get out? And he said, of course everybody gets out. Very well, then true. I said, well, if he got out, did everything change? Well, yeah, he said everything changed. Okay, so if everything changes, is that good? And he Absolutely. said, that's Absolutely, that's right, it's good. Well, then what are you worried about? And he says, well, that man, he got in my cab, <laughs> and he went right back onto that old track, you know. He went right back onto that old path, and he started to go right there again and get all upset, really attached at the anger at this man who got in his cab and just told him what to do one evening and got him all upset. And finally, I said, yeah, but you know, this is kind of uh, all you have to do. I said, wait a second, let me explain this another way. And he said, what? And I said, well, uh, here's the deal. There's a lot of people in uh, Colombo who would really just love to have your job. And he looked at me, me said, want my job? I'm just a taxi driver, he mm -hmm. said. I said, but do you realize how hot it is outside? <laughs> Okay, how hot is it? And, um, and he said, well, it is hot. And I said, you are in this cab and you're comfortable all day long. And you have full control in this bubble of a wholesome and kind life. And it, you know something that's important. He said, what? A Nietzsche. Because that, whoever gets in your cab is always going to get out of your cab. And Absolutely, so why yes. should you ever be upset about what anybody says when they get in your cab? I think that can be really applied to our day-to-day -day life as well. Because most of the time, like I mentioned before, we get attached to so many things. And anger also develops, uh, Reverend Kema, through attachment. Because we are right. too attached to something. And when that, whatever the thing, does not behave the way we prefer, what happens is we develop an anger towards it. And how can right. this anger be reduced in that aspect? Well, you know, the Buddha taught a path that is really about uh, loving kindness and compassion and joy and equanimity. We call this the Brahma Viharta, Viharas, I'm sorry, uh, with the Metta, the Karuna, the Mudita, and the Upaka. Now, there's more to this than meets the eye. There's also another piece that we need to look at and when I, when I ask you, who is it that you communicate with in your life, Budima, more than anybody else? 
from the time you're born until you die, who do you communicate with more than with my anybody? parents? What about yourself? Well, yes, that's very true. You see, you just you just missed there. Okay, but when we we talk we talk and communicate more to ourselves than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so one of the things that has to happen for us to rebalance and to change is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And who we are the hardest, who is the hardest critic of who, what we do in our lives? Who is ourselves. that? Ourselves. Ourselves. What do we do? I mean, if we're in, in entertainment or we're in doing programs like this, the most dangerous thing is to get hooked on going in watching ourselves and getting really down on ourselves. I should have done that. I, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said that. Oh my, I shouldn't have said that. I should have said that. See, see what I'm saying? We can get all wrapped up in that. Right. And we are the harshest critic for ourselves uh, in the world, in, the, in our life. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to look at is can we forgive ourselves? And then the next thing we have to look at is we want, we don't like the world maybe right now. Maybe we don't like what's happening. We don't like all the wars and all the discussions about it and disagreements and everyone arguing all over the place. And yet, you know, here we are and we, we have a problem with just forgiving that because we're so angry and a lot of us have a lot of angst about that. Mm -hmm. But a don't lot. you think we should accept it the way it is? Oh, should we? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. That's we the should, question. We should accept the truth as the way it is, but we should look at things to see how things actually are, the mm -hmm. essential facts and not the unessential. That's important. Now, part of this is we get lost with the past and the future and the present. So let's do that for just a minute. I think I may have done this a long time with you yes. a long time ago, but let's do it real quick. The past you know, you're by, you, you're, here's a line right here, and you're born here, and you die over here, mm -hmm. okay? And you're right in the middle someplace, yes. going along towards the point where you die, mm -hmm. okay? Everything behind you is the past. What's true about the past? It's over, right? Over. Can you change it? No. Can you color it differently? No. Can't reshape it like clay? No. <laughs> Nothing like that? It's, it's, it's all fixed gone. fixed in time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then in the future in front of you, you're not there yet. Can you tell me what it is? No. You don't know what it is. Okay, and you know, if we start worrying too much about what's going to happen, uh, we can get really sick even from this mm -hmm. tremendous amount of worry about what's going to happen next. So then you have the present time that turns out to be where we are and where we're moving along the line towards the time we will eventually die and we all will eventually die. We, our true. bodies will be used up and it will get, it's lost its use and that will be the end of our time. Okay. But as we're moving along, the only place that we're alive is in this little place that is the present time. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say the present moment so much because you can't watch the moment, 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 moment on the clock. And <laughs> I can't picture myself getting a headache trying to stay in that tiny little moment, but I can stay in the present time. Yeah, that is very true and very important, I guess, uh, Reverend Kema, the thing that you brought up. Uh, when we do our present day activities, the problem is sometimes we do complain a lot, like you said, I need to do this, 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 and this. And then we keep thinking about those problems. But if we can live in the present moment, I think most of the problems can be solved in society. You know, I want to do another show with you sometime, but I'm going to introduce this right now. We have a thing called the Nevermind Game. Right. So never mind. Mm -hmm. Why do, we, why do we let that catch us? We have a choice. We have what's called volition, and that's a choice of our will to do one thing or the other thing. Which way are we going to go? It's there all the time. So a lot of what the Buddhism is about is steering ourselves towards the direction mm -hmm. that is the wholesome direction, which is staying in the present moment and understanding how things work. Now, we just talked about the past and the future and the present. If I give you this one cup of energy, if I give you one cup of energy right here, okay, and I say to you every morning, you have this cup of energy, are you going to give one third of the cup away to the past and one third away to the future and just have one third to live on for today? No. 
so that's you need to be aware of the fact you have enough energy right here you have enough energy for today every day mm -hmm. it's a it's an invisible glass it sits beside your bed when you wake up it's there <laughs> okay and you and it's reminding you that you have that energy now the thing is with buddhism we have uh the the forgiveness the compassion and the loving kindness and what we have to do first is we have to forgive ourselves. So if I were to say to you, you say, how, how would I do that? How would I forgive myself? You know, some, even in this case, I will cover this briefly, but in some faiths, they'll say only God can forgive. I can't forgive myself. I'll say, okay, but if you forgive yourself, then God will know you're ready to be forgiven because then you've gotten back on track. So it's okay for you to forgive yourself in the closet, okay? <laughs> It's okay to forgive yourself and you d it's an it's a practice of forgiving yourself and really meaning it I forgive myself for not understanding or I forgive myself for causing pain to myself and and others those two phrases are pretty good mm -hmm. or making mistakes one of them my teacher will use now I forgive myself for not understanding I forgive myself for making mistakes that's a good start, mm -hmm. that one. And you say it and you just sit there and you smile and you sincerely send yourself forgiveness and wash all over yourself this forgiveness. And when you're doing that, somebody will pop up in front of you. Now that is the most important thing. Okay. Uh, Reverend Kema, when, when <laughs> these problems come such as hindrances, how can we solve it? Okay, when something pops up in front of you, somebody will be there. And it usually involves somebody that you're angry about or you uh, are uh, any number of different things that you want, you, you dislike the person or the situation mm -hmm. and you're angry about the situation, so it's time to forgive. So how do we do this? When that person pops up in front of you, you may not want to forgive them, but remember, you're in a closet at home and you're just going to do this. <laughs> okay. So what's the difference? I mean, go ahead, forgive them. The thing is... Uh, we have this capacity to forgive. We talk about it in every faith, from every pulpit, mm -hmm. from every place that we're giving a speech, but we never quite say that one thing I really wish I could hear. So now I want you to go home and I want you to do it. I don't want you to just talk about what has to happen to change the world. I want you just to do it, you know, to forgive everything. Why not? The big question about forgiveness is, well, I, I heard about forgiveness. I read a great article about mm -hmm. forgiveness, and someone else says, oh, I heard him talk about forgiveness. I heard this president talk. Mm -hmm. I heard someone else talk about it. I'm not interested in talk. I want to know what's happening. Why not forgive? That should be the talk that someone gives is why not forgive? Mm -hmm. Because you forgive yourself, and then you see somebody come up, you say, I forgive you for not understanding, I forgive you for making mistakes, and you keep sending this to them. So now do you see what's happening here? I'm giving to myself, then I'm giving to someone else. So this is a dana, isn't it? This is a generosity to myself, mm -hmm. a generosity to the person that comes up, and then something very interesting happens with the forgiveness meditation. If you keep going very sincerely, and you can try this, okay? Of Call course. me and tell me what happens, okay? <laughs> I, would, so, I would definitely. So, so you keep sending it to that person. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that person will forgive you. And they will either smile back at you, I forgive you too. Or you will feel an overwhelming kind of relief come over you, you can't explain. You let go of this. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Got a second here, right? Uh, I'm working on this with a fella. Uh, he's a writer, and he's in uh, Russia. I'm working with him long distance, training him with this meditation. And he started to do loving kindness when sometimes we can't keep the feeling of loving kindness going because we are angry at someone. And so we have to back up and forgive ourselves and play the forgiveness program for a while. Now you can play the pro program all the way through until nothing else happens, nobody mm -hmm. else comes up. Or you can play it long enough 
practice it long enough to uh, understand how it works. And then you take that skill and you tuck it away. And if you ever need it in your life, you have that to pull out mm -hmm. and use it in a situation where you're so angry, but now you have a way out of this mm -hmm. and you will feel better. So what happened with this fellow was he lives in a town that's very cold and there is a whole lot of snow and everyone, it's not a big city, it's a medium sized town. And the problem is everyone in town knows that he and this other man uh, don't like each other at right. all. And there's something happened and there was a big thing there. No one knows what it is exactly. They really hate each other. Okay. And so the routine for these two people were if he walked down the street and the other man was coming the other way, he would cross the street and continue to walk and he would go that way. And everyone on the street would breathe a sigh of relief mm -hmm. because they didn't <laughs> run into each other. Well, my students started to practice the forgiveness meditation and he was having an interesting time of many things popping up and was very much committed to working with this. And after working for about three weeks with this as his primary meditation, this man popped up in front of him and he tried to forgive him and he couldn't and he went back and forgave himself again for not forgiving and then he came back and forgave him and it wouldn't work and he came back and forgave himself and then he went and forgave him and it went through and this man forgave him now he talked to me about is this really going to make any difference uh, with the other person if i do this in a closet sort of at home by yeah. myself and I said, well, why don't you try it and see what happens? Mm -hmm. And then he wrote me an email. And in the email he told me, it was a very cold day and he was walking down the street to the coffee shop and in the opposite direction, far away, he could see this man was walking in his direction. And he waited to see what would happen instead of crossing the street. And he, as the man got closer, he couldn't feel any negative energy coming at him anymore. And the interesting thing was people were on the other side of the street watching him and nobody knew what to do, what was going to happen. And there he was at the steps of the coffee house and the man came up slowly to him and greeted him and they had words that were kind words and greeting words. Mm -hmm. And then something strange happened that really changed the attitude of this whole town because the two of them turned and went into the coffee shop and sat down and had coffee and he told me talked about their families and then they left the coffee shop and went away in opposite directions so you tell me is there any power in this sort of thing we talk about the power of prayer we talk about the power of uh, ceremony and ritual we talk about the powers that are still in existence in relationship to Buddhism and it's all still there. And the power of loving kindness and of forgiveness and then loving kindness, which happens next, is real, is measurable by science and it's real. And this is what Buddhism offers us to develop. And from right. that, compassion and, and loving kindness develops very powerfully, mm -hmm. changes our lives. That is very true. That is very important after all. I think uh, you gave us an insight uh, to the practice of this great Buddhism, especially when it comes to mindful and mindfulness and right effort, how we can put this place and walk through this path to the eternal bliss nirvana. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Kema, for joining mm -hmm. us in Dhamma and You, and we hope to see you on another day as well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Samma Sambu, the Saranai.